How does your conception of geographical and transfer frontiers apply to the rest of the natural world? I can see how the dynamics of the geographical frontier could be similar, but cannot intuitively apply transfer frontiers. So this actually fits perfectly with the previous question. So, you know, what, um, in what way could we argue that other organisms besides humans engage in, in markets or an exchange that looks like markets? Uh, you know, just famously to use the one that, that titillates is sex for food trades in bonobos, right? Yep. The so-called pygmy chimps, the sister taxon to chimps. Uh, and, when, and, you know, and, and so-called nuptial gifts are present from, you know, spiders and wasps and, you know, all, all over the animal kingdom in which in order to get access uh, usually to a female, a male must supply a gift of some sort, usually food, sometimes his own body. Um, and, and that is, that's a kind of market, right? That is an exchange uh, that is not A for A, but A for B. And uh, there's going to be constant negotiation between each player in terms of whether or not um, they think that they're getting a good deal and no, it's not conscious conscious when it's spiders and to some degree some of it's going to be in bonobos some of it will be conscious but not as fully conscious as it is in humans and of course a lot of the trades that we do aren't conscious and we think because we use language we put this conscious wording on things and um, then we forget all the stuff that's happening below the surface because we think our words are our truths and they're not yeah um, I agree with this and one of the reasons that um, we talk about mating and dating markets is that this really isn't conscious. People are involved yeah. in uh, market-like exchanges even when they are they find that terminology abhorrent. But somebody who yeah. is versed in the, in the terminology can just map it on there very, very easily. But here's the thing. You know, you've got lots of examples that we can find uh, within humans in places that we don't expect it, within other creatures um, in close context like... Uh, you know, bonobos within their group and all. But if you're willing to look between species, the stuff is everywhere, mm. right? Every one of these insect or animal pollinated systems, fruit oh, distribution, yeah. you know, yeah. creatures or are... even... Oh, so, 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 so what you're talking about is, you know, a, a bee comes to a flower and gets, uh, and gets nectar and exchange carries gametes to the next flower. So clear trade. But even something like mixed foraging flocks... Of, of different bird species, one of whom is helping find the food and the other of whom is better at uh, alerting against predators. Like, that's a kind of exchange as well. Oh, of course. Yeah. And, you know, frankly, if you and I were to just set about the task, we could probably come up with example after example until we literally fell asleep at the microphone because... <laughs> you don't want to see that. No, you don't. I, yeah. yeah. Um, no. And market forces will prevent us from doing that because it wouldn't be a good strategy. However, I mean, look, we've got e even just you, right? You are, Them? yeah, you, all of you. Mm -hmm. um, you are um, simultaneously an individual and a colony of gut flora and, you know, other creatures that live you know, on some your some of them are eating right now. Well, not anymore. Um, <laughs> But, uh, you know, your gut flora are part of a partnership in which they get something and um, you very definitely get something, the ability to live because of their activity in your gut. And even, even your cells, your cells are um, the composite of two distinct creatures, right? Your mitochondria were at one point free living creatures who took up residence inside of cells that became eukaryotic. So you're not even one creature. You're a partnership at the level of 30 trillion cells, each of which have these uh, little once autonomous creatures within them. Uh, you know, we've got networks of um, fungi that allow plants to... Um, uh, extract nutrients from their soil environment and there's an exchange of resources there. The exchanges are everywhere. And um, anyway, a little imagination reveals just how broad a concept it is. Yeah. So I think um, we... We did not actually answer the question. What was the question? Which was about transfer frontiers and, oh, right. and where we see transfer frontiers in in non humans. And I think basically any time uh, you see theft of resource, or uh, which often manifests as territoriality, um, that's a, that's effectively a kind of transfer frontier. You know, we're talking within species. Um, well, 
gosh, not even like I can think of just from, from my own research, I had, I had one frog species moving in and stealing, stealing a place in which to rear his, his babies from another frog species. And, uh, once done, there was no using that resource again until the second frog species had raised his kids and moved on. Yep. Uh, so nectar uh, thieves, nectar thieves. Nectar oh yeah. Thieves. Uh, like hummingbirds that go in at the base of the flower rather than going in where they're supposed to. And so get the nectar, but don't pollinate. Absolutely. They're yeah. beautiful, but they're diabolical. Yeah, it's nasty, nasty hummingbirds. No, I'm a big fan of hummingbirds. Yeah, but yes, they do. St- uh, all sorts of creatures steal. Mm-hmm. And in fact, I have bad news for you. Animals, we're stuck with it, right? We we are not autotrophic, right? And even those you might be thinking, but corals are autotrophic. No, they are not because they you are- You might need to define your terms. Uh, generating their own food. So plants are generating- uh, carbohydrate from sunlight and CO2 in the atmosphere. They're literally taking air and turning it into sugar and cellulose using energy from the sun. Like that's the honest way to do it. So autotrophic self-feeding effectively versus heterotrophic other feeding, which other is what feeding. we are. Yeah. So basically no matter what kind of animal you are, you're stealing those uh, resources from some animal or some plant, and ultimately, if you chase things, thing, these things down far enough, it has to come from some autotroph, almost all of which are plants, which are generating these things through photosynthesis. So, you know, um, do we still call it a transfer frontier if it's been going on for so long that mm-hmm. it's just the way things function? I, you know, uh, it's kind of a distinction without a difference. Um, but anyway, uh, is it a perfect match? Maybe not. Maybe uh, maybe it's just easier when you're talking about um, human populations. But it, you know, if you back off the tolerances just slightly, it maps very well. 